It's Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. Let's talk about the news. From the Financial Times, China and Russia challenge U.S. claim to mineral-rich stretches of seabed. A recent announcement by the U.S. government that it was claiming huge swaths of underwater seabed as its sovereign territory has been challenged by the governments of China and Russia. These underseas areas, which are located off the coast of the continental United States, as well as Alaska and Hawaii, are being claimed based on the idea, formalized in international law, that nations have control over seabeds that rest along their continental shelves. This extended claimed territory is collectively about the size of two Californias, and such areas are considered to be increasingly vital as a bunch of important infrastructure, like undersea communications cables, are located along such seabeds, and because resources necessary to electrify economies and move away from fossil fuels are also available in these areas, raising the possibility that they could be mined someday. Though the volume of such minerals that could be harvested and the seriousness of the damage caused by mining in these underwater ecosystems is still being looked into. From Reuters, Venezuela opposition again without candidate as Yoris unable to register. An 80-year-old academic named Karina Yoris, who was recently tapped by Venezuelan opposition leader Maria Karina Machado to serve as the party's candidate, has been unable to register as a candidate, apparently having been blocked from accessing the Electoral Authority's online system. Machado, who won more than 90% of opposition votes in a primary election last October, was barred from running for office by President Maduro's government, Maduro having long been accused of rigging elections and having told his supporters just last month, quote, we're going to win by hook or by crook. We're going to win always, end quote. Yoris was selected to serve as the candidate because Machado was barred, while people close to her were arrested as part of an apparent intimidation campaign by the government. It looks like Yoris will be unable to run too, though, which makes it more likely Maduro will run essentially unopposed in the country's anticipated July election, which in turn may lead to a dissolution of his government's agreement with the United States to lift sanctions on the country's oil exports, that lifting predicated on allowing a fair and free election to take place. And from Axios, Florida Governor DeSantis signs social media limits into law. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has signed a controversial law that will place limits on the ability of residents under the age of 16 to access social media. This law will take effect on July 1st if lawsuits from social media companies fail to prevent its implementation. And once in effect, it will prevent kids under the age of 13 from using some social media platforms and will require that those ages 14 and 15 attain parental consent to access the same. This law also bans minors from accessing adult websites and will require age verification on such sites within the state which would necessitate users provide facial scans or photo IDs, similar to a law that was recently implemented in Texas and which is being challenged by free speech advocates. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.